Welcome to ASRS's Journal of Vitreoretinal Diseases Authors Forum. I'm your host, Dr. Timothy Murray, Editor-in-Chief of JVRD. On each episode of the JVRD Authors Forum, I will interview innovative retinal researchers on their studies featured only in JVRD and how these studies will impact our patients' care in our clinics. Tune in to hear directly from investigators about the clinical implications of the newest and highest quality research in the field of retina. Welcome to JVRD's Author Forum. Today, I'm joined by Dr. Nina Barakal, Professor of Ophthalmology at the Bascom Palmer Eye Institute and Director of Pediatric Retina. We'll be discussing Dr. Barakal's paper, Retinopathy of Prematurity Screening in the Setting of scleral icterus. Dr. Barakal. Thank you, Tim. Thank you for, for having me here. So one of the things that um, you are renowned for is pediatric retina, both in the retinopathy of prematurity space and in general. So how did this particular presentation come to, b to be in your clinic? Well, you know, t Tim, you know that I've been screening for the last 23 years at, at Jackson Memorial Hospital, Bascom Palmer. And, you know, I've screened a lot of babies. And one of the biggest challenges is to be sure that you're catching, you know, you're screening at the right time, you're treating at the right time. So we avoid blindness from retinopathy of prematurity. And screening is, is very important. You know, you need to understand when that happens so we can truly avoid not only blindness, but you know, bad outcomes or, or visual compromise. So I realized that a lot of these babies that are very small, born less than 25 weeks and less than 600 grams, sometimes they have immature livers, so they're not um, metabolizing bilirubin well. And not only do they have an icteric sclera, but they also have icteric vitreous. And when you look in, it looks kind of yellow. And in a baby around 32 weeks, 34 weeks, a vitreous that's not completely clear, that's already a little bit immature, a little bit hazy, you add the yellowness of the bilirubin, and many times it's very difficult to be able to diagnose retinopathy of prematurity. So is that a common phenomenon in, in, those, in those very young infants for you? No, it's not common, but if you have those very sick, very small babies, if they're very sick and they're very small, they're probably going to be intubated for a longer period of time, and they're going to have an immature liver that cannot process all that bilirubin. And often at that age, you've commented on the fact that the pupil may dilate poorly, there may be abnormal you know, iris vascularization. So, so since you've stated how important screening is and, and how complex it is, what do you do differently for those infants? Well, you, you've made a, a great point. You know, the view in, in these babies um, is compromised by many things. Sometimes the cornea is not completely clear. You could have a tunica vasculosa that's still present. You have, because of that, you have poor dilation. You have an immature vitreous, and on top of that, you add the bilirubin in the vitreous. So right there, you have all this series of things that are affecting the view in. So my point is that we want to prevent blindness. And if you have a medication that's very easy to administer, that's going to be able to save the eye in those very difficult weeks when if you lose you know, you're staging, if you lose that window of opportunity of treating those babies at that time, then you could lose those eyes. So my point is that if you have a baby that fits that criteria, born at less than 25 weeks, born very small, intubated, icteric, and you have no view, then honestly injecting those babies to take you through those difficult weeks will save vision. So using, for example, an anti-VEGF, with intravitreal injection, even without being able to have the staging that, that we all think is so critical. Correct. And, you know, I've tried different things. You know, I've tried, you know, trying to dilate better. I've tried taking a photograph and use, using the red free. I've tried doing fluorescein angiography. But, 
the reality that if you look at the wavelength of bilirubin and you understand at, at the wavelengths that it absorbs and it emits is very similar to fluorescein angiography. So even if you try fluorescein angiography, you're still not gonna see the vasculature details that you need to make the diagnosis and the staging. So I advocate that in those few cases that are very difficult, treating with anti-VEGF will save the vision in those babies. So traditionally, we've, we've suggested looking again, or we've suggested um, photodynamic therapy for, for these babies, um, hoping to clear some of, of the vitreous or allow the, the iris. And in fact, for, for you and I, I think one of the first awarenesses of the use of anti-VEGF was um, Ugo, um, who used that in a very vascularized eye with hemorrhage. And, and the eye looked entirely different the next day. Yeah, the, the amazing thing about, you know, anti-VEGF in retinopathy of prematurity is that, you know, at the time when we didn't have any better treatment that laser, we would get these babies referred to, to us with um, neovascularization of the iris, which in reality is a tunica vasculosa that persists, that has been fed by the VEGF production in the eye, which gets very angry, they get engorged, and you cannot dilate that pupil. And when we used to get these eyes, you know that laser is not gonna do it. You can't hardly penetrate through that. You get a lot of anterior absorption from the laser. So you knew that those eyes you would never be able to control. But Hugo, Dr. Quiroz Mercado in, in Mexico, he showed that if you inject anti-VEGF into the vitreous of those eyes, within 24 hours, the pupil dilates and there are no abnormal vasculature. So I think he showed um, that we are able to treat these babies. And to me, when you're um, reading your, your case um, series, it really highlights the importance of the timing of screening, the effort that goes into screening, the complexity of screening. But, but I think the idea of the use of anti-VEGF without a traditional staging in eyes that have no other opportunity, that's rather unique. Yes, I, I think, you know, when you're dealing with such complex eyes in such complex situations, you have to think outside the box, right? And um, we know anti-VEGF works. Um, so we know that we can treat these babies that they grow up, that they, are functional, that the retinas are functional. So if we can save these eyes in just by injecting anti-VEGF and we can make the life of the screener ophthalmologist easier, I think we should do it. I also think that it's interesting that, you know, um, in the past I think we would try to wait and come back to that baby, but I think often that would move through that window that you're alluding to where we have this therapeutic response with a good outcome. You know, yes, it's okay to wait, but you have to, to think that in my NICU, I have a system that is, is so great that I can say one week, and if that doesn't happen at a week because the baby's too sick, I'm gonna be informed, and my team knows that that's a baby I'm worried about. But the reality is that out there in the world, people don't necessarily have the team approach that I have for ROP. And if the doctor might go one week, might say this baby needs an exam in a week, and that baby somehow doesn't get seen, gets lost in the system, and then you could easily have a, a baby that we cannot bring back and have the same vision we could have had if treated on time. So to me, interesting to highlight the complexities of the screening, some of the unique difficulties in these very um, young micropremies and some unique approaches to how to manage them. So thank you for speaking with us today and, and sharing that wisdom. Well, thank you for being interested in this topic. Thanks for tuning in to the JVRD Authors Forum. You can watch and listen to more episodes on the ASRS YouTube channel and on popular podcast directories, including Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and Spotify. Visit www.asrs.org forward slash JVRD forum on the ASRS website to learn more. See you soon.